Good morning, folks. Mount Etna erupted yesterday. It's Europe's most active and the 14th eruption there this year. Lava flows could be seen from a pretty good distance. Ash clouds reach kilometers into the sky, and one local airport saw minor delays. Top shot from NASA's Earth Observatory shows a former Chinese city. This is around 100 times the water there now from lower levels, and it leads us into today's flood report. We'll lean on the rainfall measurement mission as usual. Folks, when I saw stalled storms at India, I had to call it out a few days ago. The signs of impending flooding were as clear as day, and now we've got them. The storms are still not able to break away from the Bay of Bengal. The other top seven-day rain totals are in eastern South America and in the Central Americas here with the Yucatan. South of that Indian flooding, we have the first storm in the south of the season. All locations mark the calendars. This one's pretty strong, already down there heading due west. The other top watch right now is in Europe. That low cresting the UK is said to have been like a tornado when it ripped through. Watch that convergence line as it creeps eastward, all residents on deck. Mega low in the Pacific, still hammering the Alaskan and Canadian coastlines. This dwarfs the one storm watch we have tonight in Texas and Louisiana. Quick now onto Comet Linear. Do you remember the caution we expressed about a potential outgassing event rather than a total cometary explosion? Well, the comet is yet still alive. True enough, the comet is just fine, throwing a bit of surface volatile temper tantrum out there, but if you're taking ice on shots, you might want to go ahead and look for Linear 2. It's right up there in the pre-sunrise sky. Well, the interplanetary shocks have begun but in a very weak way. First CME hit last night and was not significant in any manner at all. Sensitive meters show nothing and the KP is quiet. We do still have some high energy proton activity. The solar flares have died down. The post XM flares are shown on NASA's endless spiral now as not very geo-effective. The larger ones presumably will interact with Earth at any time. With SDO glitching, I pulled the continuum images off ISWA. The big spots departing have gone silent since the new incomers caught Earth in their peripherals. This is where the action is now on the left. Quickly looking at magnetic power, it is sparsely moderate, but the openings are small. And Gong shows that umbral and coronal fields are blocking that opening from Earth for the last 24 hours and potentially a few more. One last point about the current solar uptick which is still outrageously pitiful for a solar maximum. It's possible that this is the uptick for the solar pole flip. Looking at the polar data, you'll remember both sides are technically flipped, but that the red looked to be headed back up over the baseline. Well, maybe I was wrong, maybe not. If indeed this proves to be the start of another turn down on the red, the poles will have officially flipped. We've already seen some sunspots with borderline and proper magnetic form, some look to be reversed even, including the current southern departing group looking like it has two very large positive umbras and not a whole lot of negative going on. It's all part of the reason that we add shots of our star to close with eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.